Hello, my name is Jane Shepard, and I'm the Director of Growth and Strategy for Careers at Udacity. Thanks for joining us for today's information session with our partner, Google. Udacity is proud to partner with a world-class organization like Google's Developer Relations Team to connect our students and alumni with opportunities to put their tech skills to work. In addition to our guests from Google, who will share information with you today live, we have an online team from both Udacity and Google standing by to answer your questions. So feel free to type your questions into the chat area on your control panel, and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Our hosts today from Google are Rachel Harpster and Grace Lee. Grace Lee is part of the Developer Relations Recruiting Team at Google. Grace has been working at Google for two years. She was previously a university programs manager and a recruiter at Intuit. Grace attended Santa Clara University and graduated with dual bachelor's degrees in liberal studies and sociology. Joining Grace is Rachel Harpster. Rachel joined Google in March of this year on the developer relations recruiting team also. Previously, Rachel worked in education reform with Teach for America. Rachel graduated from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. Grace and Rachel will share insights into what the developer relations team does and give insights into Google's hiring process. They'll also introduce Lila and Alex, two more members of the Google team, for additional perspectives on the kinds of things this team does every day. We have lots of exciting information to share, so I'll turn it over to Rachel to get us started. Rachel? Thank you so much, Jane. We are so thrilled to be here. Thank you for having us. Um, we have amazing partnership with Udacity that we are looking forward to continuing to grow. As Jane said, Grace and I are here to be your hosts today, but we wanted to introduce a few of our friends who are also here uh, to support you. And if you go through a process with Google um, and are interested in working in developer relations engineers, these folks will be there to support you as well. So first on the bottom left corner, we have Rainier Austin. Rainier is in the chat and she's happy to answer any of your questions that you have. Um, and uh, it will also be there to engage with you. Kyle Allison in the middle at the bottom, he is a recruiter who supports you um, in coming on site with Google and beyond and bringing you into an offer and supporting you in that onboarding step. The next person is Jenna. Jenna is also on this broadcast watching and supporting and will be in the chat to answer questions. And above Jenna is Sam Tafoya. Sam is also an amazing recruiter on our team who does a lot of our external work and will likely engage with you if you're interested in moving forward with us. So real quick, before we jump in, we're gonna have some chat engagement, like Jane said, but if everyone could type into the chat, where are you coming from? Where are you logging in from? And then we will get moving right after that. I'm logging in from Boulder. I don't have chat access, but I'm logging in from Boulder, uh, Colorado. We have an office out here, and Grace and Rainier are out in Mountain View. Keep telling us where you are coming from. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. I know you are from across the country and we will go ahead and get moving. Awesome. Grace, you want to take it away? Oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, I wanted to introduce some of our DevRel engineers and speakers for today. So um, we have Lila Fujiwara, who is a developer advocate for Android. So she's been at Google for almost two years empowering Android developers. She was previously a course developer for Android at Udacity and a Peace Corps volunteer teaching CS to students in Rwanda. The second speaker that we have is Alex Hamilton. Uh, he's a DPE for cloud or developer programs engineer for cloud. Um, Alex has been the, on the DevRel team for over a year, improving data scientists' experience on Google Cloud Platform. He was previously a tax technology consultant at Deloitte. Awesome. So as you saw in your email from Udacity, we have quite the program for you today. So wanted to walk through a little bit of what to expect and what we will cover. The first part is what's developer relations at Google? We often call developer relations DevRel, so you'll likely see that interchangeably throughout our presentation. The second one is why DevRel at Google? Why is DevRel unique and why is it something that you should consider as you're thinking about your next career move? The third piece is diving in and demystifying our hiring process. Grace will walk us through step by step what you'll want to go, what you will go through, and what you can expect in our process, from everything from how long it will take to how you can prepare. Uh, we will then move into the portion where we'll bring Lila and Alex 
into, into our presentation. And they will share a little bit more about who they are, their experience, um, what they do, and answer some of the questions that you guys submitted previously. And then we'll close out again with questions. Uh, there was a lot of questions about our hiring process. So Grace and I are gonna go over a couple of those more specific ones to make sure that you walk away with as much information as you need to potentially join DevRel at Google. Awesome, Grace, let's jump in. What's DevRel at Google? So uh, developer relations uh, or developer relations engineering, um, the roles vary from company to company, but they all have a similar goal. So it's to represent developers and be the voice of the user. And they do this in many ways. So the first thing uh, they do is by building relationship, relationships with the developer community. So this can be Java, PHP, Go, um, even parts of ML and AI. Um, they do this by also supporting their growth, by giving them a lot of educational resources, talking to them at meetups and um, presenting at conferences, just providing a lot of um, good materials for them to work on. And also um, they contribute to the client libraries as well. Uh, and code samples. Um, they also gather feedback and use it to shape a product or tool into what it needs to be. So often uh, our deliver relations engineers, they act as customer zero, so they get to actually work on a lot of products before they're released to make sure that they, uh, it can be, it's the best that it can be and also they can anticipate a lot of challenges that will happen when the product is released. Um, and again, DevRel is just a part of Google, so it, uh, we work very closely with many different internal teams. So we work with software engineers, we work with product managers, we work with programs managers on making a product um, awesome. So Rachel, I think you're gonna uh, go on next. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Grace. And as Grace mentioned, um, we are one team, but we are on all of our product areas. So we have a developer relations team with Android and cloud, as well as Chrome in a lot of our niche roles. Um, and so there is a growing developer relations engineering team here at Google. I love this visual, so I wanted to show it to y'all. It's a great representation of how developer relations engineering is positioned at Google. So as you can see, it's strategically smack dab in the middle in between our products and platforms and engineering teams and our third party developers. So on the left, we work really closely with the product teams and we support the creation of APIs and SDKs. We also are uh, working and supporting our, our client libraries and the documentation and the code that's going to be duplicated multiple times by the amazing developers who are using it. Um, in addition to that, we also going back towards, oh, excuse me, towards the, uh, the platform and product team, uh, we give a lot of feedback because in this role, you are so immersed in the community and ecosystem of the community that you're working on. You are going to be the firsthand knowledge and understanding of what's going well and what's not and how we can push our products forward to be better for developers. So those third party developers give us the feedback and then we return it back to the product team and help to impact them um, to make some change and continue to push our pieces forward. On the other side, oh, can you go back? Sorry. On the other side is the third party developers. So uh, this team does a lot to inspire and build awareness around our, our changes and our products. We also provide developer resources, um, whether that be online and, and on GitHub and Stack Overflow or in person, um, you know, in doing tutorials or supporting uh, some of our clients on, on a one on one basis. Um, and then like I discussed, third party developers then um, give us feedback and give us their sentiments about the, the products that then we cycle back to the platform and products team. So it's an amazing relationship cycle. It is, it puts you right in the middle in this sort of customer zero position where you are getting firsthand understanding of everything that's going on and providing amazing tools for people to build great things. So why, hopefully that was very inspiring, um, but there are some other reasons to why you should do DevRel at Google. Um, the first thing that Grace mentioned um, is that we are developers first and foremost. This is an engineering team that sits on our engineering ladder and we believe that in order to be a really good developer relations engineer, you need to be a really great developer. Um, we want you to be able to talk the talk, but also walk the walk. Um, and we truly believe that those technical skills foster trust and effectiveness for our developers across the world. 
Speaking of across the world, you should definitely consider Google, uh, DevRel at Google because of the global developer community. The SDK or API that you're supporting and creating is going to be used across the world. Um, and our next billion users are going to be seeing the work that you're producing. And so you get so many access points into different communities um, worldwide. Uh, some, one a cool example of that is many of you have likely been to some of our conferences like Cloud Next. We had a Cloud Next in Mountain View in Tokyo, and we also have one coming up in London. And a lot of times our developer relations engineers are on the forefront of those conferences. Um, the next piece that is important and so compelling about uh, being a DevRel engineer is the empathy piece. You get to advocate on behalf of what's going on for third-party developers. You're going to feel it, and you're going to see it, and you're going to be able to do something then about it. Um, so the, the potential for impact and the potential for amazing uh, change making is right here within DevRel. And we're not done yet. There's more reasons why you should DevRel at Google. <laughs> the next piece, as you can tell from me, is excitement and passion. Um, the folks who join developer relations engineering are really passionate about their technology. Um, whether you're on the Android team and very excited for a new launch, or you're on the ads team and we have a brand new API that just came out and you're supporting developers and using it, the passion and excitement that you have is going to have ripple effects for all of the developer communities at Google. Um, in that as well, because you're on the forefront, you are also learning about the new technologies and the different collaboration points. Um, one of the roles that we're working on right now um, is within Firebase and games. So it's a great technology in Firebase, but it's also transcending into our games and our Android team and our cloud team and the partnerships that we have there. Um, so you are just on the forefront of the new, the new things and the things that are coming down the pipeline. Um, and then finally is around education. I was a teacher, as you might have uh, thought. Um, and you, the exciting thing about this team is that you get to teach folks who might not know anything about the work that we're doing or the products that we have or what's available at their fingertips. Um, you get to teach them about it. Um, and if our develop, third party developers are running across something that is hard or they can't really understand, you are the person that they can come to. So it's a really fulfilling role to be able to provide those technical resources and see that light bulb moment come on for some third party developers that then leads to them creating something really cool. Have we convinced you yet? Awesome. So who's better to convince you than our own team? Um, so here's a video that we're going to play, fingers crossed, um, that's going to share a little bit more about DevRel from their own perspective. Developer relations is any unique position because we span across all the product areas. Anywhere where there's a developer product, there's developer relations. We provide knowledge about developers, expertise about what developers find useful, and what the best developer experiences are. It's all about Google as a platform. I hope that it makes some new perfect applications. Having a developer relations team for a company as large as Google is pretty powerful because you get to have people whose job is to make platforms accessible. I'm Peter Lover, author of Pro HTML5 Program. I'm Carrie. Today we are demoing Pixel. I'm Rupert Whitehead, and I'm here today as IO ambassador. I'm showing you how to get started using Google APIs. My name is Yara Kishevich. Welcome to to take Google provided services and bring them to developers who might not have been able to discover them on their own. To have somebody who's writing down step by step instructions and putting up examples on their own personal GitHub repo. It's great to see it being done by somebody else, and that's kind of what we do. We're the link between Google and any other company or developer that wants to be involved. 60% of my time I spend writing code. And the rest of my time I spend communicating. I write technical documentation. Every now and then I find myself preparing to give a presentation for Google I.O. or from even a local meetup. I get paid to go into Stack Overflow and to hang out in the Google Plus community and talk to developers. And I get to travel to hackathons. I get to put on my own hackathons. If people find bugs in our APIs, it's my job to look at it, try to reproduce it, and take it back to the product. Everyone I've met is so incredibly unique and comes from really diverse backgrounds. But what I have noticed is consistent is that everybody is very strongly technical. But the ability to be clear and coherent, that is what's powerful for DevRel. If you're good at explaining how things work, if you like teaching people how to write code, then developer relations is for you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks so much. And I'm so glad it worked. We'll also send that video in our follow-up um, so you can watch it as many times as you like. I'm going to pass it over to my partner in crime again, Grace, um, who's going to walk you through a little bit more about demystifying our hiring process. Yeah, so here is um, a bit of an overview of the hiring process. So there's a lot more detail that goes into it. And I know that there were a couple questions in the feed about um, the intensity of our interviews and things like that. And I'll do my best to answer in the questions and also hopefully address it in this um, slide. So after this webinar, you'll be given a form or a feedback form to fill out and they'll ask a lot of questions like where your interests are, your experience and things like that, your preferred locations. Um, and then after we determine that there's a good match, we'll reach out to you and then there's something called the initial phone screen or the IPS, which is specific to recruiters. Um, so the initial phone screen, you'll be connecting with us. You'll share your background, your technical experience and your interests more in depth and then we're gonna find a role that fits. So this is in regards to experience, expertise, and location. So location is really important because we're not quite like software engineering where it's kind of all over the place um, in many different cities and locations and offices. We are pretty much based on the West Coast and the East Coast. So for example, Seattle, um, Boulder, uh, and Mountain View in San Francisco are probably where most of our cloud people sit. We do have an office in New York as well. And then we have um, many of our other roles are probably in New York and Cambridge. And we have very few remote location, uh, remote work opportunities. So um, that's why it's pretty important. So after the initial phone screen, um, the next critical part is gonna be the TPS or the technical phone interview. So the technical phone interview is a 45 minute technical phone interview with a DevRel engineer. So it's gonna be someone within DevRel, but we usually try to align you with someone who's on the team. So you won't get, for example, if you're applying for a partner DA role, you probably will not, will try not to set you up with someone within cloud and things like that. So those are more details that we'll explain to you in the IPS as well. So in the interview, we focus on coding, developer empathy, communication, subject exper expertise, and team fit. So after the technical phone interview, if uh, results come back positive, then we move on to something called onsite interviews. So an onsite interview is basically a day of in-person interviews with the DevRel Eng team in Mountain View or San Francisco. So our interviews are usually based here in Mountain View or San Francisco. Um, so you'll usually be flying in or just driving in or taking the train. Um, the content of these interviews will be similar to the technical phone interview. So again, coding, developer empathy, communication, subject expertise, and team fit. So the last part is if, all, if the feedback comes back from the onsite interviews and it's trending positive, we'll move to something called hiring committee and offer approvals. So hiring committee is something that's really unique to Google. It's a group of unbiased senior general engineers who will review your interview feedback, your references, and resume to determine an overall fit. If the hiring committee moves to hire, then your packet is sent to an executive to get final approvals and you work with your recruiter on things like compensation, relocation packages, and things like that. So the entire process takes about six to eight weeks. It is a long process, but that's because we want to give you time to prepare. So if you'll be moving forward for the phone interview, we usually give you prep materials. So things like um, we give you an entire doc. It's pretty packed full of information of resources for you to study with. And we usually give you about two or three weeks, two to three weeks after the initial phone screen before the technical phone interview. The two to three weeks is not prescriptive. We're pretty flexible in regards to how much time you need to prepare. And also there's uh, some time when we need to plan your onsite panel. So your onsite panel, because we do want to give you a good panel, um, and also we don't have that many interviewers sometimes, uh, we, the timing may not work out as well as you'd like it to. So that's why it takes about six to eight weeks. Some people do less, some people do more. I've seen all of it. And then I think we'll go back to uh, Rachel. with Great. Awesome. Thanks, Grace. I think it's so important to note that six to eight weeks. Um, another portion of that is that we also want you to find a good fit with us as, as a mutual fit that we're finding with you. So you get to connect with, I mean, sometimes around five to eight different people on the team. And so when it comes down to you have an offer in your hand, it's an easy choice because you've connected with so many team members and you've really gotten to know overall DevRel with all the interactions you've had. So that's another just really important piece to know. Um, so where can you fit in? What roles are available? Um, that is a great question um, and something that we want to share a little bit about. We are almost at the end of 2018, um, as you likely know, but we still have several roles available um, that I want to highlight. The first one is on our Android team. 
Um, I'm sure we have some amazing Android engineers on here. I know that the Udacity Nano Degree uh, program for you uh, for Android is um, bumping and a really popular Nano Degree for folks. Um, but we do have uh, a availability on our Framework and Studio team, on our Android Games team, as well as on the overall Developer Initiatives team for Android. So not just supporting one certain product area, but supporting the overall developer initiatives for Android. Um, moving down, we have availability on our AdWords team. Um, and our AdWords team is based out of New York City. Um, and I like, I, I really love working with our ads team. And I always joke with people that it's the best job security because our ads team makes 80 plus percent of our revenue every year. Um, that's a joke, but totally something to note. Um, there are a few options within ads. Um, we have some uh, developer program engineer roles specifically for APIs in support of our e-commerce partnerships. We have um, a Spanish language uh, role available for our developers and countries with majority Spanish language speakers. Um, and then we also have an interactive media ads role um, that will support a lot of our um, interactive media and digital media that we're doing um, on our ads platform as well as in things like Chromecast and um, things of that nature. Moving up over one, um, niche roles are very often um, something that we see at DevRel because we support everything here at Google. Um, and so the one that we're highlighting today is for Google Pay. Um, and that role will be the, the founding, I guess you can say, of our developer advocacy team in the payments area for Google Pay. So it's a really exciting role. Um, and then the partner team, which supports our partners um, and is it's really on the enterprise side and really just make sure that our partners are um, able to develop upon our platforms. And so you can see these in a lot of um, consultant-like fashions. Um, we work with small startups all the way to big partners like Facebook and Snapchat. Um, as far as location goes for most of these, um, Android is mostly based out of our Bay Area. AdWords is mostly based out of New York. Um, the Google payroll is wanting to be in the Bay Area. Um, as they found the team, they want to have a really strong developer relations core to be able to learn from and um, develop infrastructure with. Um, and then our partner team is a little bit more flexible, but mostly on the Bay Air in the Bay Area. Um, just to uh, nod towards location, I know that's important to many people. So um, we will also have new roles coming in 2019, right around the corner. Um, a lot of those land in our laps in January and land online in February. So just something to note, I'm sure if you're looking at these four options that we're highlighting today, you can see yourself in many of the roles. Um, but if you can't, uh, we can keep an eye on the job board and just know that we will get amazing new roles coming um, early next year. Passing it back to Grace, um, Grace is going to walk through a few profiles before we get Lila and Alex on the line. Yeah, so the first person I want to highlight is Tansy Kai. So she's a DPE for cloud machine learning. Um, so she is a Udacity graduate. Um, uh, we, um, I believe she did the Nano degree program for machine learning. So um, Tansy has a background in film and TV and moved into a data analyst role for a few years after uh, college. She transitioned into a data analyst role and started taking online courses in machine learning. After completing one of the Nano degree programs, she was then recruited to apply for Google's DevRel team. Um, after, and here's a quote from her, after told my friends and coworkers about the DP role, they all thought it was a great fit for me because I enjoy educating others, especially when topics are difficult for them to grasp at first. The next person, the next slide. So the next person that we have is Gabe Weiss. He's a developer advocate for cloud as well, for IoT or Internet of Things. So Gabe was a professional actor in Hollywood for several year, years before moving into tech. He started as a QA engineer at Perforce, simultaneously supporting customers in the toolset group, then grew into eng leadership roles before coming to Google. His quote is, I want to help guide you through the nuts and bolts so you can do the cool stuff. I work in IoT and love, for example, teaching people how to get started connecting their devices to the cloud and enabling the others to figure out the creative part. I'm going to pass it back to Rachel because she has an activity for us to do. 
Awesome. So I told you we'd have some engagement um, today. So would love for you to think a little bit. Um, you've heard about two different profiles, uh, really. You've heard, um, and we'll hear more from Lila and Alex. Um, and then you will also, um, you also just learned about Tianzi and Gabe. Um, so considering those similarities that you've seen, whether that's the education or experience, um, what do you notice about their background and their career paths and what has led them to the developer relations team at Google? We're going to use the chat. So just chat in your responses, uh, anything, any words that come to your mind, any similarities that you see between those two um, to engage with each other and hear the different ideas that we are noticing. I'm going to give everyone about one minute to chat and engage, and then we will keep it moving to the next question. Don't be shy. Looks like we had one response already um, about them both being in tech. Someone recognized that they both had a tech background before they started. Awesome. We also had two more really great observations. One was that they both had creative backgrounds, like creative in, in film and not necessarily just tech, so they were a broader base. But um, it looks like a lot of people picked up on um, a really key thing, and that was their desire to spread what they knew to other people and to share their knowledge. Awesome. Diversity of background is really something that you'll see in, in DevRel. I mean, Lila is from, it did the Peace Corps. Um, you know, Alex was in consulting, acting, data science, you name it. And Rachel, you're getting lots of love for Google about the fact that you guys really do reach out to non-tech people and have a really broader base for your hiring. So lots of love coming your way. Awesome. Thanks for sharing all those, Jane. And so the second question, um, which is, does our second question, if you could go back, perfect, is does it change your perspective in regards to the experiences of candidates who apply and grow at Google? We'll take another 30 seconds to one minute to chat in the chat if you want to let us know what they're saying, Jane, and then we'll move on to our guest speaker. We're seeing some recognition and some identification with the nano degree because a lot of people saying they can relate to the fact that they came from a non-tech background and wanted to make a choice. Um, so I think there's a lot of an ability to relate there because of the nano degree program. It's really a good fit for why people come here. Um, and Philman talked about Udacity alumni being um, a, a common ground as well. One of them is an Udacity alum, so there's some common ground there as well. Awesome. And Anna, I love this one. Anna said that it makes her feel confident that she can do it too. Seeing that other people have done it gives her the confidence to say, I can do this too. Love it, Anna. Thanks for sharing that. Great. Well, we are about one minute ahead, but I see our guest has already joined. So I will jump in. Grace, you want to introduce our guest of honor? <laughs> I'd love to. So uh, this is Lila Fujiwara. Uh, she's a scalable developer advocate for Android. Um, she's got a couple questions uh, already on the slide. So what's the day-to-day -day for you in the scalable DA role in Android team? What's rewarding about it? And what's your advice on becoming or growing into a developer advocate? Is being a technology evangelist a good start? Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, should I just jump into it then? Yeah, jump right in. Share a little bit more about you. OK, I'll, I'll start by talking a little bit about myself. So um, I guess the most interesting thing career-wise, so I got a, I got a degree in um, computer science. But after that, I went off to teach. And I was actually uh, in the Peace Corps for a number of years, which is a volunteer uh, organization um, that teaches abroad, um, usually in uh, communities that would not otherwise have the resources to hire teachers um, that are sent out there. Um, I taught at a all-girls um, boarding school. I taught computer science there um, at a pretty introductory level. And then after that, I joined Udacity. Um, so 
I know we, we've got a lot of Udacity students, so maybe um, I can't see any faces, but uh, maybe some of my students are out there on the call and uh, worked at Udacity for a number of years on Android content and then um, came over to Google where I'm now a scalable developer advocate. I can talk a little bit more uh, about what that means. Um, and maybe a good way to do that would be to talk about my day to day. So um, scalable, there's a couple of different um, DevRel positions, I guess, and the sort of um, goal of scalable developer advocates is that we create material that um, scales out to the larger world. So it's not, uh, there are partner developer advocates who will work with kind of like the big companies that, um, you know, like Facebook is making their Android app. And so partner DevRel will work with the engineers of Facebook to make sure that the Facebook Android app is um, up to par and kind of um, has all the new Android features and stuff in it. Folks like me work for, um, teaching new developers, um, anybody that's not, uh, for whatever reason, doesn't have like a direct uh, connection with Google in that capacity. Um, so I'm continuing to work on uh, Udacity content, actually like training, uh, which is my interest, uh, and um, online content is a lot of what I do. Um, developer advocates uh, will also go out and uh, be at conferences, and they're kind of the eyes and ears on the ground who are interacting with developers. Um, and this is really important to Google because we also uh, have a direct communication to the product teams that make a lot of the stuff that developers use. So everything that we're hearing and the feedback that we get, uh, we can bring it back to um, the product teams at Google who, who don't always have the time to be running around the world and uh, attending all these different conferences and meeting with developers. Um, so it's a, it's a really... Uh, so day-to-day -day wise, uh, I'm in meetings with um, different product teams. I am working on training materials. I uh, occasionally will pop in front of a camera. We have studios in Google um, and make uh, Dev Bytes, which is like one of the things that we put out on our YouTube channels um, and uh, work on training like Udacity materials. Um, can I see the questions again on screen? <laughs> Yeah, I can read them off to you. It looks like we might have lost Karen for a hot second, but I'm sure we'll have it back soon. Um, but the next question is, what's rewarding about it? Well, so I actually had a choice between going off and being an engineer versus um, coming over to DevRel. And one of the reasons that I decided to do it was, first of all, I think there's like a lot of autonomy with it. Um, at Google, at least you uh, kind of get to decide the um, areas that you're passionate ab about. So I'm doing a lot of work around architecture components, which I find very sort of theoretically interesting. And um, our Android architecture and kind of the different patterns was actually something new that I got to pick up on the um, job. So that was really exciting. Um, another, I mean, <laughs> another thing that's rewarding is uh, like because I continue to get to do sort of teaching related stuff, um, I have students uh, all over the world and we'll um, occasionally hear from or meet some of those folks at conferences, which is always like a really humbling, humbling experience. Um, and I think something that not a lot of folks can say that, I, I don't know, I, I occasionally have like really nice people who come up and say, you know, thank you, I watched your courses, which is um, uh, a very special thing and very rewarding. Um, yeah, I would say that, the, so yeah, so kind of the variety, um, impact on the product, uh, you just have, it's a role with like kind of a lot of power and responsibility, uh, which is at once both terrifying and incredibly rewarding. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. And so the final question is like, what is your advice on growing into a developer advocate role? Um, and someone said, is a tech evangelist a good step first? Um, but just any overall advice um, for folks out there? Mm -hmm. Well, um, and I, I was looking at some of sort of the slides that uh, folks saw earlier. I don't know if there's like a particular path that any one of us takes. Like I said, I come from a training background, which is actually very different from um, other folks on the team that I work with. Uh, another rewarding thing is that everybody has like really different uh, paths, I guess, to, to developer advocacy. Um, if you are in a role like mine um, as a sort of developer advocate as, a, as opposed to like a developer program engineer or technical writer, that tends to be a role where you are traveling more and talking with people more um, and you are usually like fairly involved with the conference scene. So I think that um, if you are interested in that, it's definitely uh, worth it to uh, potentially attend some conferences, look into 
um, potentially speaking at conferences. Uh, that wasn't the path that I necessarily took, but it is the uh, path that others take. Um, folks also sometimes have like podcasts or blogs that they maintain before coming uh, to Google, um, if, if you're com kind of coming into a role uh, like the one that I'm in. Um, but I guess for me, it was, my background was teaching. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I kind of lucked out by um, being able to get that uh, position at Udacity because I think that did kind of meld the sort of more scalable part with that also um, what I've been doing for the past few years, uh, just becoming a better instructor. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that if you are um, passionate about the type of stuff that makes you a good uh, developer advocate, like you're really into the technology, you like working with people, um, hopefully in your free time or as hobbies, or maybe even as part of your job, you will be doing stuff that uh, kind of puts you in those uh, positions and then uh, can let you better um, sort of uh, position yourself um, if, you, if you come in for an interview. Awesome. And so, uh, Lila, there are a lot of roles available on Android, uh, as you likely know. Any plug you want to make uh, for this group of 400 plus? Oh, gosh. <laughs> as to why they should consider Android? Well, is Android in particular or just like a, well, Android's really cool. I mean, if you're following, so if you're following Android at all, like a lot of stuff is changing. So um, we launched Jetpack at the last IO, which is just really like, um, a recommittal to making uh, developer tools and libraries that really serve developers. And it's very de developer focused and involves a lot of the stuff just like as scalable advocates that we uh, want to do. And it's really great that the engineering team and like we're all kind of on the same page about that. Um, the introduction of Kotlin is really exciting. Um, I don't know whether I should. So like right before I joined, um, I, I knew a few folks who were on the team and I had a little bit of a fear that I would join and I might be kind of making, uh, you know, like two minute videos about the new support library version and like tiny little changes that were being made on the platform. And uh, my experience has been completely the opposite of that. Just like so much new stuff coming out, a lot of um, just really exciting touch points with the community. So. Um, technology wise and Android wise, like that's why, I mean, hopefully you're already excited about Android. Um, and, uh, I think you would know that like a lot of this stuff is exciting. Uh, as far as, um, being a developer advocate, like, um, I guess one of the perks if you enjoy it is you get to travel a lot and you get to meet a lot of different people, uh, throughout the world. And it's something that's, um, part of your day job as opposed to something that maybe you're doing on weekends or as a hobby. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh. It's just really special to be like, hey, I'm, uh, you know, being flown out to London to give a conference talk, and uh, this is, and I get to meet all these developers over here, um, or I am making a course that you know hundreds of thousands of people are going to see, and that's part of my job. So, <laughs> anyways, to me that sounds really cool, and if it sounds cool to you, then hopefully that's a that's a good sell. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Feel free to stay on if you if you would like. We're gonna um, Grace is gonna introduce Alex. Um, our, our next uh, presenter. We'd love to have you stay, but otherwise have a wonderful evening. Um, Grace, I'll kick it to you. Sure, um, so uh, coming up next is Alex Hamilton. Um, he's a DPE or Developer Programs Engineer for Cloud. So um, definitely a different role from Lila. And um, he'll go into what his role involves and he's got a couple questions too. So what made you want to join DevRel? What is the best advice that you receive that you can give in regards to preparing for the technical interview? Um, I'm assuming that's DevRel or general. And what does teamwork and collaboration look like in DevRel or on your team? Hi. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Alex. I work on uh, I work on the big data and machine learning team um, in the uh, Google Cloud Platform overall team. So uh, what I do is I actually focus on BigQuery. Um, so I'll create code samples um, for BigQuery. Um, and I also work on our uh, Python library that people use to interact with BigQuery. Um, I came from um, tax technology consulting, um, which is kind of a, a funny like niche career to come from. Um, but you know, also data related, uh, dealing with like clients like tax data pipelines. So um, this was a uh, fun to move into um, creating content for data scientists and for people who were um, using tools like I like I previously was using. Um, I really. I really enjoy DevRel because, well, I mean, first of all, like I, I definitely wanted to be coding. Um, like most of the time, I was actually the other roles I was applying for at other companies were um, traditional software engineering roles, 
And so I definitely wanted to be coding a lot of the time, and um, which I which I am able to do now. Um, people kind of in the in the developer programs engineer position, um, you can also like go give conference talks and and do blogs and do the things that developer advocates do. But um, there's more of an emphasis on coding, and then like whichever which percentage of both you want is kind of up to you. Um, so I primarily actually work on the library and work on um, code samples, but I also do go to conferences. So um, that was important to me to do uh, primarily coding. And then I remember I just really enjoyed school um, throughout my life. And what I like about it is um, like learn the cycle of learning something new, um, creating a good uh, project using best practices, and then moving on from that. Um, like I like I like jumping around, learning new things, uh, trying different things out. So the the amount of flexibility I have in this job is pretty awesome. Um, I'm able to you know pitch ideas to my manager. Like I think this would be a great thing to focus on this quarter, based on what I heard from these conferences that I went to. Um, am I able to do that? And if he thinks it's a good idea, like I'm able to go work on that, which is really empowering as like an entry level um, engineer to to have that much say over what you're working on. Um, yeah, so I'd say the the flexibility and the and the the travel, and then also um, just creating a really quality code that's going to be used for communication. Um, I find that really satisfying um, to write that kind of code. Um, rather than just getting something to barely work and just kind of ship it out the door and then have bugs down the road. Um, I really like following best practices. I'm kind of a nerd about that kind of thing. Um, oh, great. Should I move on to the other like questions? OK. Um, so some of the interview advice I received um, that I found really helpful uh, for the developer programs engineer interviews was to do the easy and medium algorithm and string manipulation problems on HackerRank. Um, I really like doing those uh, problems to prepare um, for the for the technical portion of the interview. Um, and then the other like the other thing that can kind of surprise people is that a lot of times um, the coding in an interview is done in a Google Doc. So getting used to like writing code in a Google Doc is something that you want to practice with. Like a lot of people practice technical interviews like on a whiteboard, but um, uh, a lot of times our interviews are the coding is done in a Google Doc and it's a little it's a little weird because it feels slightly different from a text editor so it's just it's good to get kind of get used to um, coding there um, and then in terms of like collaboration on on the team that I'm on so <clears throat> we have uh, engineers in Seattle Kirkland Mountain View Sunnyvale um, New York and we're just adding Boulder now so um, we collaborate with people uh, across the country so we'll we'll have um, video chats and in-person meetings um, to collaborate with each other. Generally, um, when I'm working with someone on, on code, I'm, I'm going to like uh, have a meeting with them in person or, or on GVC to kind of like flesh out what the plan is. And then I go work on that um, code independently. That's the, the workflow that I tend to prefer. But then um, uh, for ex like if I'm if I'm working on something that I don't have as much knowledge on or I need a lot of help with, like uh, I'm doing this big refactor of our C sharp BigQuery samples, and I don't uh, use C sharp like at all. So I'm I'm uh, pair programming that with one of our um, C sharp developers who's in um, the Mountain View office, and so um, that's um, that's kind of an unusual thing for me. But I, I wanted to get this work done, and that's kind of a that's kind of an interesting thing about this role is it's like very common for us to like, you know, there's seven languages that we write samples in and um, it's common to kind of jump in and do something in a language you're not familiar with and um, and like learn something really quickly and and, and uh, get something out the door, which I find uh, pretty uh, fun to to do. Like the last quarter, I, I did a sample in all seven of the languages, but I only actually know two of them. But it's kind of fun to be like, oh, wow, this language, there's all these like weird little brackets around everywhere. <laughs> All these dollar signs. Um, so I, I find that to be a fun part of the job. But it, so if I don't have as much experience, I'll, I'll pair with somebody on it. No, thank you for um, thank you for taking the time out to um, talk about your experiences and help us with some of the questions. Um, what was it called? Uh, I know that um, we had uh, Lila talk about some of our roles. I know that we're kind of getting to the end of 2018, so you don't have as many cloud roles anymore. But is there anything that you would like to mention about your team that, you know, uh, any DP roles that are coming up and things like that that you can give a, quick, a brief mention about? Um, yeah, well, I mean, as you mentioned, like, we don't have any cloud roles right now. Um, I really do enjoy being on the cloud team um, because the cloud platform covers so much area. And so I'm able to work um, on a lot of different things. So um, you know, if you are interested in cloud, um, like 
applying applying for that in the future when we have new roles opening up is good. Um, I would say for um, developer programs engineer, which is my role, like in contrast to the developer advocate role, like. Um, I mean, I personally like. I don't think I could do the developer advocate role because I'm not. At, um, I'm not as good at like you know giving presentations and talking to people. Um, and so I, I like that I'm mostly doing like engineering and, and mostly communicating with people through code rather than through speaking or um, or through writing blogs. So that was a way that I heard somebody distinguish the roles is like which way do you primarily communicate, uh, whether it be through code, through words, or through speaking, and and just um, I would use that as like. Uh, kind of a benchmark of which which role you'd like to apply to. Awesome. Um, and again, you're um, thank you so much. And you're welcome to stay and listen to us talk about um, pieces of the hiring process because we do have a couple questions left for me and Rachel to answer, or we can just um, I don't know part ways. But um, thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a big theme of questions that you submitted beforehand, um, and Grace and I combed through it. Uh, Grace made an amazing oh. FAQ with some of the easier to answer questions, but we figured we'd tackle three with you all that we heard numerous times. So the first one, I'll kick it to Grace. How should I prepare if I'll be applying to DevRel or technical roles in about two years? Uh, let's see. Um, let me see. My, Sorry, give me one. Can you hear me, Rachel? We can. Okay, okay, got it, sorry. Um, oh, let me go back. Um, so I think I'm presenting uh, in place of Jane, just in case if she can. Yes, we can see it, yes. Okay, um, so how should I prepare? Uh, so for so for DevRel and technical roles, um, I think that uh, if you, if you can, so for DevRel specifically, we, we want you to continue being very enthusiastic about the technical side of things. Um, you know, we want you to con be continuously learning because things are always changing at Google, and they always want you to be uh, to hone your skills and to um, just keep up to date with new things, new trends that are coming up, and things like that. Because whether you work for DevRel or for a SWE role, um, probably in your you know in your interview questions, they're going to be asking you some questions that are more technical in nature, but also about your technical knowledge and domain expertise sometimes. Um, so that's one of the ways to repair is to, you know, um, also continue to code as well, uh, since coding is still a pretty big part of many of our roles. Like if you decide to uh, go for a product management role, they require you to have a technical background as well. Um, or when I mean background, I mean like knowledge of it, not necessarily a CS degree or something specific like that. Um, for technical writing, things like that, you'll have to have some technical knowledge. For DevRel and software engineering, definitely something technical. Um, so coding and keeping up to date with a lot of our trends is really important, and especially also our products as well. So whether it's Google products or our competitors, um, keeping up to date with what they're doing too is a pretty good idea. And, and I would love to add, yeah. So I would also add um, that if you have two years and an on ramp, regardless of if you're applying for um, de developer relations or technical roles, involvement in the community in some way is a great thing to start doing now. Um, so whether you start a blog or you jump on and um, contribute a lot into a GitHub or a Stack Overflow, um, those are all really good things um, for any role that you apply to here um, because we believe so strongly in open source at Google. Um, it's, it's a good indicator for any of those roles. Um, but that's my my advice as well. Um, so the second question for DevRel, what's the most important? What's most important in a Udacity resume, and um, and uh, what do you generally look for? I'll kick this one off and then pass it to Grace. What I do want to say first and foremost is uh, when we partner with Udacity a lot. And the Career Center and the alumni network that Jane and Karen work on is a phenomenal resource. Um, so many of you are already using their resume resources and their interview resources. Keep doing that um, because they are great um, and they really do catch the eye of our hiring teams. Um, but I would say, um, in addition to that, um, we are uh, looking for what you're currently doing in your role and then also the results of what you're currently doing in your role. So uh, whether you uh, shipped off X amount of code or increased um, developer um, participation by X percent, showing any sort of result in any way, quantitative or qualitative, is very eye-catching for resumes here at Google. Anything you want to add, Grace? 
Let's see. Um, I think one of the things I did want to mention is, so we have a lot of people who, I, I'm, I know that Udacity is a, a pretty large program, and we have people who are, you know, may not come from a traditional CS background. We also have those that do come from a traditional CS background and have been doing software engineering before, and they pick up Udacity or General Assembly and a lot of different programs on the way. So the combination of those two don't necessarily make you a an appropriate fit for our role. Sometimes those are just for like your knowledge or for your learning. So I think um, what Rachel touched on before was, you know, contributing a lot to open source projects and um, uh, helping people on GitHub and Stack Overflow, having your own blog posts and being part of the community. Those are probably things that we do look for. Like if you have publications, uh, and I know publications are, is a really big word. Usually people who do PhDs and things like that have them, but sometimes people will write things on their own. Um, any kind of thing that you've authored before, any anything like that, that could actually help us at least take a look at your resume um, or have find, find more interest in it. Because you do get a lot of people who, again, are from SWE backgrounds and they've picked up some of these um, bootcamp programs and things like that, or intensive uh, training programs. Um, but having the DevRel skills will help you a lot, I think, especially in our interviews, um, since we do focus quite a lot on uh, developer empathy again and domain expertise. Awesome. And then last question, what common challenges do candidates face in technical interviews? So common challenges that candidates face in technical interviews. Um, so for so this is specific to DevRel because I, I do not recruit for other roles. So other roles, there's going to be many different challenges. Like for design, it could be something else. For technical writing, definitely something else. So for DevRel in particular, the three things that come up the most are probably it's the coding, the time management when you're coding, and also empathy. So the coding, I think what was mentioned earlier, it's a little bit different from how SWE's code. And not saying that it's anything very different, it's just that um, when software engineers code, uh, the, con the user at the very end never gets to really see the code. They see the product at the very end because they're working with all these people like product managers, DevRel people, programs managers to make sure that things are packed well and then they look good and they work with design as well and things like that. Um, but developer relations, the code is our product because people will see uh, people will go to those client libraries. They'll look up, you know, blog posts. They'll see the documentation you've written. So the code has to be consistent. It has to be readable. It has to be just very clean and good. Um, so I always tell people, imagine as if you're teaching someone else how to write the code. Um, you probably wouldn't write it out just the way that it's in your head. You would write it out in a way that makes sense to them because you'd ask them clarifying questions. You'd ask them kind of what's challenging to you, like how come you don't understand this, or kind of what language are you more familiar with? Are there examples I can provide for you? So it's the clarifying questions that help you a lot with the coding as well. The second part is the time management for coding. So time management, when you think about it, you have 45 minutes to interview. Um, you have uh, you know, 25 minutes in the beginning when they ask you all your verbal questions. So things like your experience, domain expertise, why do you want to be a reller? Um, and then after all that's done, the last 20, 15 to 20 minutes left is the coding. And when you're given that little amount of time, especially with one question, with follow-ups or multiple parts, even if it's very simple, um, people sometimes get, they rabbit hole, they get lost sometimes, um, they don't ask the right clarifying questions to build a good foundation. Uh, they sometimes get really stuck because it's the impact of that. It's a Google interview. I'm interviewing with a really big company. I may not be able to show them what I know. Um, the interviewers at the very end, they always say that you have to get something down on paper though. You have to show us what you know. Um, and often they actually say that I don't really and these are pretty rough words, but it's, I don't really care if you get it right. I don't really care if you, uh, I don't really need you to find the most optimal solution, um, but you need to write good consistent code and show me what you know and be able to at least write out something for me that demonstrates that. Um, Cause we have candidates who sometimes don't write the most optimal solution. They don't write what the, maybe what the interview is looking for. Um, but in the end, because their code was clean and it was readable and it made sense for their background and it made sense for kind of where they're coming from, because our interviewers are actually, they actually do take into account 
what your background is. So just because you get something wrong doesn't mean that they'll say, well, they got it wrong, so we're not going to you know, move forward. Um, so I think time management really uh, is a really important thing. And then the last part is going to, so uh, again, so practicing all those problems that Alex was talking about earlier on lead code and hacker rank and getting faster and faster and getting better at it is actually a really good idea. And then um, the last part is empathy. So because developer relations is such a very unique type of role, showing empathy to other developers is kind of a difficult thing to master sometimes. So that's why people who have been tutors or teaching assistants um, before, or you know, they've tried to help others, like teachers, they were explaining things like how Lila was a CS instructor. Um, that helps a lot because they can empathize with others. They can understand where they're coming from and why they're having all these challenges. I think one of the hardest things in our interviews is when, um, you know, sometimes if they ask you, like given three options, um, how would you help another developer? Like there are three answers that are good and that you could possibly use, but how would you help the third party developer? Sometimes what the candidate will say is, well, I think this is a really good answer. Well, that's what they think, but it's not what the developer, the third party developer wants. Sometimes a third party developer needs a lot more help than that. So sometimes when that happens, then you don't really show very good developer empathy. So I think, trying to understand other people's problems and trying to figure out what they want and how to explain it to them is probably what you can you know work on you can talk to other people who are technical or maybe your friends and try to ask them like do you, could i possibly explain python to you and see if you understand or can i explain what an api is to you and can you understand like those will probably help you the most so that's Thanks, my three parts awesome so next slide, um, just to close out, we are at the end of our presentation. Um, we are not gonna be able to take any live questions, but if you have any uh, questions, I know Rainier has been doing a great job um, in the chat, but um, if you have any other ones, feel free to contact uh, Grace or myself, and we're happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and then on to the next slide. Uh, next steps, you're going to be hearing, and I know Jane's going to explain this as well, but you're going to get an email with a feedback form. Um, we'd love for you to fill that out, especially if this uh, resonated with you and you're interested in, in moving forward. Um, we also included a link to our live job so that it's easy for you to access. Please fill out that form um, and let us know that you're interested. Um, so then what will happen with that form, just to uh, set very clear expectations, is um, if, you, if we currently have a match, or uh, we find alignment with hiring managers that are interested in your profile, we will reach out. Um, it might not be, uh, we might not reach out this quarter because we don't have a match, but we'll find one next quarter and we'll be popping in your inbox. So you'll hear from us if we do have a solid match. If not, you likely or may hear from us in the future. And um, that is because we have found a really good potential um, match based on your background. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kick it back to Jane. Thank you so much, Grace and Rachel, both of you. It's been really informative. And Alex and Lila, yeah, I think we've gotten so many positive comments in the chat, and this has been so informative. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. I'll just reiterate the next steps. If you are interested in applying for a role with Google Developer Relations Team, and um, Rachel and Grace will be happy to see that many of these people in the, in the chat box are interested, um, look for the Google Form link that uh, Rachel mentioned in the thank you email that you'll be getting for attending this webinar and you'll see some next steps there. And also while you're at it, check out the alumni portal, which is alumni.udacity.com to learn more about upcoming opportunities like this webinar. Um, and also specifically for um, uh, the Udacity Festival that's upcoming this weekend where you can share more with the community of uh, a fellow alumni in general. So look for a link in the chat to the um, alumni portal. And thank you for joining us today. Stay curious and keep learning. And Rachel and um, Grace, thank you again. This has been wonderful. Have a great day, everyone. Um, thank you so much, guys. Bye. <laughs>